Today is a side quest. Go, don't play with it, don't be the side. Hey, still not understand. Hey y'all, I'm Oni. Thanks for joining me. If you're new here, I am a full-time content creator for the past going on 13 years, but I've also been practicing as a physician assistant for the past 11 years. On this channel, I talk about how I am going through my journey of accomplishing my bucket list of 40 things before I turn the age of 40 in about 40 months. But today we're talking about a side quest because I mean, we're gonna talk about one of my passions, which is my career as a physician assistant and why I became one. I'll tell you a little bit about my experience, how I got into the program that I got into, what specialties I've been in and how I feel about them. And overall, is it still the right career field? So if you're considering a career in healthcare or just interested in the PA profession, keep watching. Okay, so my path to PA was, of course, unconventional like they all say in their essays, but honestly it was. I was in my sophomore year of college. I had gotten into, um, or at least I would convinced my parents to let me go to school away from home because I was gonna become a pharmacist, which I had no interest in, but there was no program for pharmacy near my home at the time so I just chose that I had always been interested in science and the human body I really felt directionless for the first one to two years of college so by the end of sophomore year I decided that I'm gonna figure out what to do because I only had little time left so I started researching, trying to figure out did I want to go into respiratory therapy? Did I want to achieve the dreams of my immigrant parents and become a doctor? Because the pressure was heavy to become a doctor. Everybody wanted that MD behind their name or their children's name. And I feel like it hasn't changed much. <laughs> the immigrant dream of having a doctor or lawyer as a part of your family is just, you know, it's consistent. And what's funny is I stumbled upon the career of physician assistant while I was researching online. I had never heard of it before, never met a PA, had no idea what they did or what they were capable of doing, only what I saw in this description as I was looking at a list of healthcare careers. And so as I looked at PA and saw that to become a PA did not take the same amount of time as an MD, but most importantly to me, I didn't have to get stuck into one specialty. That right there told me that this is what I needed to go into. So this is long before I learned that I had ADHD. But now that I know, it aligned perfectly because to feel like I would be stuck doing the same thing forever felt like a death sentence. I was like, please, I could not become an MD and always do the same thing. I'm jumping a little forward because before I stumbled onto PA, I told myself, okay, let me do what everybody else is doing. And especially what my mom did, because let me just follow in her footsteps and become a nurse. And when I told my mom that, she's the one that honestly kicked me towards the path of finding PA. Because when I told her, I think I'm gonna go to nursing school, she told me, no, I can never see you being a nurse it just does not fit you. I know who you are, I know how you are, and I know that you are capable of doing some of the things that nurses have to do. And my mom was right, okay? Shout out to all the nurses. They put up with some things that I'm grateful I did not have to do, if you know what I mean, like cleaning up after people's ex you know, excrements or you know, poops, peas, all that. She knew I was queasy to having to deal with someone's you know, vomit and all that, but I still, was excited about the human body. Blood didn't make me queasy, poop and pee did. That's a long story. So when she told me that she could never see me in the position of a nurse, I had to find something that would still fit for me. I was trying to fit into this box that everyone had created. And when I had stumbled onto PA or physician assistant, now physician associate, it felt like it was so me because it was completely against what everybody else had been talking about or moving towards. When I would tell people that that's what I was thinking about doing, everyone would have this confused look on their face because they hadn't heard of a PA before. This was at least 
10 almost 15 years ago so very few people knew about the profession at least in my community at that time i didn't care at that point i had learned that i drive my future i felt that god had spoken to me about what i needed to do and as long as he didn't put a roadblock in front of me as long as i kept putting one foot in front of the other and kept moving forward as long as i achieved each step that needed to happen to get there it was meant for me and that's what happened essentially because like i said before i had never met a pa and if you know about pa requirements you need to shadow a PA, have a recommendation letter from a PA. It's not easy, as God would have it. I eventually got initiated into my chapter for Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, and one of my line sisters happened to have a job with a PA, working directly with her. And when I expressed to her how important it was for me to have this relationship with PA, she made it happen and we literally <laughs> shared a desk and a job where I was able to work next to hand in hand with the PA which I'm so grateful for her PA bro at the VA hospital she is a huge reason why I was able to get my acceptance letter into PA school now let's jump forward into applying to PA school now it's a serious feat from back then and now to get into PA school it was so competitive and I knew as someone who had struggled especially in organic chemistry which I think I I dropped it before I failed the first time. The second time I got a C and then I ended up retaking it, which for me was key. Retaking any of your prerequisites for PA school that are less than a B or B plus, that's key. Make sure to retake those courses, even if that's at a community college, because that's what I did. I was initially taking them at my four year college and I wasn't doing too well with those. Retook it for a third time at a community college and got the grade that I needed because that prerequisite GPA mattered a lot. So because I knew that my GPA overall was not that competitive, made sure to invest a lot into the other areas of my prerequisite to make sure they shine through. Like making sure I had volunteer hours, making sure that I had a lot of experience working with patient care or working directly with a physician assistant. At that time, I also took my GRE and made sure I scored as high as possible. I took Kaplan courses, everything. I even retook the GRE because I wanted to make sure that my score was very competitive since I needed to make up for other areas. Now, another thing is that I played the numbers game. To get into VA school, I applied for, initially I was looking at 21 schools, but I ended up submitting my application for 15 PA programs to make sure that hopefully one of them was for me. So lucky me, I was able to interview at two schools and I received an acceptance for one. And that one is all you need and all that matters because I'm so grateful to have gone to Toro University of Nevada. My experience there and also just living in Las Vegas was perfect for me because I moved across the country by myself. Being in a not so small town that had an excuse for people to come visit me was amazing because otherwise I felt really isolated and alone in the program but but getting into and through PA school takes a lot if you guys want to hear about my journey going through PA school and how everyone was dropping like flies from the first semester anatomy and physiology is not for the week let me know down below and if you are interested in becoming a PA one day I want you to drop a lab coat emoji down in the comments now let's talk more about after PA school because that's a little bit more positive and more exciting because PA school was it was a lot, but I'm so grateful that I passed my pants exam, which is the physician assistant certification exam, my first try. And once that happened, I was able to practice as a physician assistant. And yeah, they kind of just throw you out there, sink or swim, when you actually become a PA. It's different than MD, which I do see the pros and cons. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. But it's different than MD, where you have a residency that kind of holds your hand through things things, you are sent out there to practice the medicine you were taught. And I love that. So when I got out of PA school, I started practicing as a orthopedic surgical PA. During that time, I also started working as an urgent care PA. After that, I was um, a locums PA for some time and did hospitalist work. Then I was an urgent care PA again. Then I was a pediatric ER PA. Then I moved again <laughs> and I was a pain management PA. Then I found my dream position 
that I currently hold that I hope to continue to practice for years to come as a psychiatric physician assistant. Now, for me, psychiatry has been perfect. I know some people may shy away for different reasons. And if you want me to talk more about my love for being a psychiatric PA, please let me know down in the comments. I love answering your questions, but man, this has been a dream come true that I never knew because when I was in PA school and did my psych rotation, I had no interest at all in psychiatry. I promise you, I was like, yeah, I just need to pass this EOR and be done with this because I'm never gonna do psychiatry. I just, I didn't think it was real medicine back then, but also back then I was one of those people that didn't think mental health was that important. So I ate my words. I became a psychiatric PA and we can talk about that story more later because God literally pushed me into it and I, I'm grateful for it. Now let's talk more about the difference between a PA and an MD. So the difference between a PA and an MD is the amount of training, the required residency, and PAs in most states are required to be supervised under an MD. Now don't get it twisted, PAs diagnose, treat, and prescribe medication. And oftentimes we don't need to check in with our supervising physician for any of the decisions we make. The PA profession was created to work collaboratively with all healthcare positions. Now let's talk about salary. Who makes more, a PA or an MD? Now MD does earn more in the long run, but PAs have a comfortable salary. What I love about being a PA, or at least becoming a PA, is that going through PA school required less of loans or money from me than it would if I had gone through medical school. Some would even say that the lifestyle of a PA outweighs the paycheck, and that's what I would agree with. So it all comes down to work-life balance. As an MD and even a PA, there are some positions where you could work seven on seven off, which may give you a bit more work-life balance. But overall, as a PA, I have loved that I can create my own schedule. And this is not for every PA position, but it has been easier for me as a PA to decide to work part-time. I do not have the entire caseload relying on me. As a PA, I'm not responsible for everything that goes on in the office or every single patient that needs to be seen. And I love that for me. How long does it take to become a PA versus an MD? Well, for a PA, continue take from two to three years. For me, that was 28 months. And for an MD, if you're including residency, it could be six to seven years. One of the other benefits that I love between a PA and an MD is the ability to switch specialties. That was my number one reason for becoming a PA. Now, like I mentioned, I've worked in several different specialties and can change whenever I choose. As an MD, you're required to work in the specialty your residency was in. Now, if you want to switch to something else, you would have to do another residency or fellowship. One question you might have is, can can PAs become MDs later? So technically yes and technically no. If you'd want to become an MD, you technically have to go back to med school. Now you can become a doctor of physician assistant studies and there are several programs all over for that. I will say at this time, I don't personally see the benefit for me to go back and do that, but many have seen that and many do that. So if you really want to become a doctor, you can do that. So again, the benefits I see in becoming a PA versus an MD is less debt, the ability to collaborate with your healthcare team, more often work-life balance, and being able to change specialties easily. So these are the reasons why PA was a perfect choice for me. Of course, everyone is different. I am not one to talk down on the MD profession. I respect everyone that becomes an MD. I love working with my physician friends and family. I love working with my physician colleagues, but don't get swayed away from physician assistant if it's something that's speaking to you. If you have any questions, feel free to comment down below, and I'll see you in the next video.